Hello and welcome everybody to the podcast podcast. This is the podcast where we talk everything fishing and hunting related. Today I go on a little rant about major league fishing and what I think as far as my insights and my my thought process on to what the league is actually going to do for professional fishing. So I hope you enjoy. Make sure you listen along to me on soundcloud.com slash podcast podcast as well as watch along on YouTube at youtube.com slash bbennettfishes and follow along with your truly myself on Instagram at bbennettfishes. Hope you guys enjoy this one. Uh, I've been sick kind of this last week, so the sniffles are prevalent in this episode, so bear with it. We'll get through it together, and I'll see you after this conversation. So the MLF is very interesting. I'm very curious to see where this all goes. I, I honestly like um, MLF coming into the professional scene. Major League Fishing, MLF, Major League Fishing decided to start a Bass Pro Tour, Bass Pro Tour for 2019. And what was interesting and why it made such a stir is because of the payouts that they promised their anglers if they join. I think they had 80 some anglers, professional anglers join from the previous two, which was the Bass Masters and, or was Bass and, gosh, I can't think of the other one right now, but 80 angler, professional anglers, oh, FLW, sound right? Don't quote me on that, but 80 anglers from the FLW and from Bass moved over to go fish the MLF or the BPT, the Bass Pro Tour, which is very interesting because one, You know, they just took 80 professional anglers out from the other two establishments that already have professional angling. That's going to open a wide variety of new anglers that want to fish professionally to be able to get into those different events. It's going to open up. It's going to be huge so that the opens, you know, now open up so people can now fish the uh, open series and then they can get into, you know, the Bass Elite series. Uh, it's interesting that these 80 people, you know, I, I guess it shouldn't say it's interesting. It's, it's given. Why wouldn't they, you know, their whole time they've kind of been getting shelled by these huge corporations, these huge, uh, I'll call them leagues. That's just the easiest way for me to think of it as a league. They're just getting, it'd be like the NBA. If the NBA had a league and they charged their players to play in their league and if they won the you know championship at the end of the year, they'd only get a certain profit of what they made throughout the year, of what the NBA made entirely, which would be billions of dollars. Billions of dollars the NBA would make and then pay out very little to the actual players that won the championship. That's kind of how the uh, that's kind of how FLW and bass, kind of are as I would see it is you know you have these professional anglers you have these uh these fishermen that have to do it for a reason I I guess I shouldn't say they have to but it's their job they have sponsorships they have contracts that they have to uphold they have to compete in order to maintain their con contracts and maintain the fact that they keep their sponsorships and the different companies that they work with happy they have to compete, but also they have to take money out of their own pocket in order to compete in these series, in order to advertise for these companies. It's pretty insane, to be honest. That, and that's why I am. That's why I like the MLF coming in and doing this. The MLF is. I could see this. You know, this first year, it's gonna be whatever it is. They, uh, they're gonna fish. They're gonna do whatever they need to do to get this first year going they have plenty of good coverage they have a lot of sponsorships uh good payout structure and you know it'll be interesting to see what the next five or eight years will be like uh i wouldn't be surprised and this is not a bold uh, it may be a bold statement but i wouldn't be surprised if the mlf became like an nfl type corporation where you have this big over corporation where you have your employees your professional anglers work for this corporation they get paid an absurd amount of money 
maybe not real early they're going to get paid all this money, but they're definitely – I can definitely see it going down that road where they have – you know, a set bank account for MLF with all their sponsorships and all their deals to pay these anglers quite a bit of money. Do they make a lot of money right now? I'm sure they do. Uh, I mean, they, it seems like most of them do, but I feel like you have to be an elite angler in this. The MLF announced uh, 80, 80 professional anglers joined the field. I mentioned that. Uh, amongst those 80 anglers are... Uh, like Jordan Lee, who two-time back-to-back Bassmaster champion. Uh, I think Gerald Swindell joined it, Brendan Polnick. Uh, a lot of people, and what's going to be interesting with this style of tournament is that it's no longer the five-bass limit, which is interesting. I, I enjoy the five-bass limit. Who can go out catch the biggest five-bass? But now things change. Now you have to just go out and catch fish, and all the fish you have to catch have to be over a pound for it to count towards your total weight so there's no real limit or there's no there's no limit there's maybe there's got to be a size this got i gotta figure out what it, it actually is but now you have it, it's different competition it's non-stop i think it was i read an article with jordan lee he commented and said that it's going to change the style how he fishes because in the previous tournaments he could go to two and a half hours, you know, or excuse me, an hour and a half to two hours without getting a single bite. But as long as he's on quality fish, he'll be okay. Here, you you don't have time to. You do not have time. You barely have minutes to be able to, you know, catch fish. It's going to be very interesting. The one thing that I am nervous about, though, with the MLF is I think they just voted on no entry fee. No entry fee, which I like, and that's not the thing that I'm not, that's not the thing I'm talking about. I like the fact that they removed the entry fee. They all voted. The 80-man field voted. Uh, I th- I'm on wire to fish right now. So the 80-man field voted uh, no to required entry fees for their participation in the 2019 tournament competitions. So one, one that means the sponsorships for MLF are producing a lot, giving a lot of money, uh, advertising, advertisement money towards the MLF, and they're doing really well to where they can afford it. Second of all, the coverage that these, this is going to get, the coverage that the MLF is going to have on TV is going to be a lot more than the previous, I think, or a lot more than previous, like FLW or Bass. Bass started to turn it around, but the thing with them is they're so old school. They were so caught up like they were, if you watched a tournament that was fished in 2013, it was filmed the same way it was filmed back in 1980 something they went out they sent cameras out they filmed a bunch of different things then they compiled it up and released it two months later nobody wants to watch that like especially nobody wants to sit around and watch it for you know three hours even if it is edited no one wants to sit around and watch it for three hours when it happened two months ago especially now i already know who the winner is A lot of the times, I know how they already won before they even get the production out. So all this coverage that they're going to have with live coverage on television, all the coverage that they're going to have to be able to, you know, put this stuff out quick. And I think that's what's changing the fishing industry is now you have all these different social media outlets to where people can put out stuff instantane, like, you know, at an instance. It's It's going to be interesting. I'm excited. But to get back to what I'm nervous about for the MLF is people coming, becoming complacent with, uh, with the fact that they have no entry fee. Now they have no money invested in it. And it's not like a, MLF is smaller compared to other professional sports. Like professional bass fishing is co- on a completely different level compared to other bass fish or other professional sports. So I'm just worried about the anglers becoming complacent. They have no more entry fee. So now I believe if you if you place top if you place top ten, you're taking home. Oh, this is a championship. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, if you place top ten, you're taking home 20, 20 grand or more. First a hundred, 
second 70, third 50, fourth 40, uh, fifth 30, 28, 26, 24, 22, 20. If you place 11th through 40th, you're taking 10 grand home. So you're autom automatic. If you place anywhere from 40th to 11th, you're taking 10 grand home. No entry fee. So uh, depending on your cost of what you had to do to, you know, actually be there and, you know, to get there, to drive there for gas, food, all that stuff, you're going to be taking subtracting that away from 10 grand if that's not covered by your sponsorships. 40. First through 80th, you don't win anything. So maybe they do leave some room there so anglers don't get complacent to where they, you know, an angler that places 38th in the field takes home 10 grand, you know. Maybe he's like, ah, yeah, I'll go next week, I'll do it all over again. Just all I want to do is take 35th. Looking at it now, I guess it doesn't happen, but... That's if you have someone place in 38th, if I'm a sponsor, if I'm a company and I'm sponsoring an angler and he's taken 35th consistently, you might see a lot of sponsorships drop and move around to different people. Because if I'm, if I'm a company, I want my, I want to sponsorship Jordan Lee more than I want to sponsor someone, someone that consistently places 35th because odds are Jordan Lee's going to get a lot more coverage on him than the guy that in the back of the field. It's just like NASCAR. Now, I don't know anything about NASCAR, but if you got a guy that your sponsorship or your sponsor and that is always in the back of the field, why, why are you paying a lot of good money? He's not getting any coverage way back there. I want the guy in the top 10, top 15, you know, top five winning all the races. That's who I want my logo and my, my name on. Because he's going to get so much more coverage than the guy in the way back of the field. And that's how I feel that MLF might be. So now you have companies that might be switching around sponsorships. You might see, uh, you might see like someone, you know, like, we'll just stick with Jordan Lee is a good example. If Jordan Lee is consistently placing in 35th, that deal that he has with Carhartt may not be around for too many more years. Too many more seasons at least. Now he's moving around. He's jumping sponsorships. It just it just is part of the business. It happens. But I'm excited. I think it's going to be interesting. They've already gotten a lot of coverage, I believe, on the Discovery Channel, I believe that they're on. They're having four They're having four events, is that what? They're four coverage or four cups and then a championship. The championship you take first place, you win half a million dollars. That's big money. That's big money. In the championship, they're going to have a field size of 30. I don't know. Bass has got to be. They got to be itchy. I'm sure they're like real nervous. They got to be. Because they. I don't know. The entry fees, from what I've heard, if you're fishing for bass, if you're. If you. If you uh, pay for an entry fee, you're somewhere five to eight grand i'm gonna say i'm just spitballing i don't know for sure but five to eight grand a tournament i don't think the payout's very much for like even top 10 if you place top 10 i think you're only getting ten thousand. that's not including if you win or uh win big bass if they do it i mean the it's not worth the investment, if that makes sense. So you got, you know, now you're getting companies that are more paying the angler just to be out there rather than to be out there winning. It's more of a, uh, you know, fish this tournament, make sure you come out to the expo and talk about our products. Could be like that. I'm not 100% sure. It may, it may not be. But I'm excited. I know Bass has done a couple live events uh, I think they usually do the the uh, Bassmaster Classic live. So if MLF goes to that style, and the other thing is it's going to be action-packed. No longer every fish is going to matter because no longer are you catching a, a, you know, a squeak, peeling it off, throwing it back, trying to get back out there. you got to weigh that thing. And if you don't remember to weigh that thing, that fish might cost you. So I think it's going to be good. I'm excited for the MLF. I'm excited for 
this new it's a break so this break kind of in this in the fishing industry kind of took a it kind of split off so a couple years ago i'd say about three or four years ago youtube started getting really big so people started making youtube videos uh there's a certain group of people that you may know that does youtube videos and that kind of put a huge wrench in the profession professional fishing industry because now kids are no longer seeing that they have to have this eighty thousand dollar boat this seventy thousand dollar truck this fifteen thousand dollars worth of bait and tackle and another five thousand dollars worth of rods and reels to be a consider a professional fisherman now they just need a rod and reel and a camera to go out there possibly make money possibly make following and now you're starting to see more companies get into it. Now, some of the big companies that have been in the fishing industry don't want to be, don't don't want to mess around with those uh, new kids that you know might even one one of them might get more coverage than all of the events that Bass has had in a season. So that threw a wrench in it. And now you have the MLF who says, "Listen, Bass and uh, FLW." What you guys are doing is, it's terrible what you're doing to them. Not giving them good payouts. The English don't really have a voice on what they want to do. You've been doing it for 50 years, but honestly, you might have been doing it wrong for the last 50 years. Now remember, this is one man's opinion from what he's read. Uh understand that this is how I see it this isn't exactly how it may be this is how I've kind of have watched it play out over the last couple months so take it with a grain of salt if you don't agree I mean if you do agree then take it with a grain of salt as well but this is just kind of my view on it this is I don't know I'm interested I hope it works out. I hope things go great. I hope it explodes over the next five years because that would just be, it'd be awesome for something that I have a true passion for, which is fishing. It'd be awesome to have this like this. I talked to Austin Sherwood uh, last episode about the CBT and how the CBT is kind of doing the same thing, but on a micro level that the MLF is doing. Uh, They came in, they kind of, you know, had really good deals with sponsors big big name sponsors in the finish fishing industry they had good payouts and good tournament schedules and they treated the anglers with respect now i'm not saying that the other circuit didn't but they just kind of i don't know they just kind of they weren't in it for the anglers which is what they should be right you know the anglers are out there just like the professional athletes the professional athletes are the one out there making money if they're not getting paid what they think they should be getting paid they're gonna move on do something else it's the same thing in every in every situation you know uh i know the reason the college anglers like the cbt this year is because they felt like they had a voice felt like they were in it you know had a vote for whatever happened and they were excited to go out and it was easy for them and it was meant it was directly toward more of the angler and the fisherman, and the competitor, rather than it was the head of the series or head of the tournament. And I think that's what MLF is doing and Major League Fishing is doing. I think it's awesome. I'm excited. Also got a cold, so that's why my voice keeps cracking and my throat kind of hurts. But no, I'm excited. The MLF is, uh, it looks like it's going to be a good thing that the field is going to be pretty pretty competitive and so it should be interesting to see oh who's this video uh it doesn't say but maybe it'll say on here yeah here we go let's see casey ashley hmm not bad jason christie at the foe Brent a- Ayler, wow. I guess I'm not surprised to see him in there. Edwin Evers would duck it. I mean, I, I'm not too shocked to see all these guys in here. Greg Hackney, Tim Horton. Tim Horton? He seems 
<laughs> Randy Howell, Mike, Mike Ike. Um, I'm not too, yeah, I guess I'm not too surprised to see most of these guys in here. It's going to be a good field. It's going to be a competitive, competitive field. Brandon Polinick, his jersey looks sick. Skeet Reese. And this is just kind of, oh, this, that's what I was wondering if Fletcher, uh, Shyrock, and I don't know if Hunter would have made it. I was wondering if Fletcher made the, made the jump over to MLF. Uh, I know he was an elite guy. And uh, Wheeler, he must, was he at FLW? Uh, I don't know. So they took a good number of people from both leagues and made a killer, killer field. And it's going to be exciting. There's going to be a lot of good sticks. Uh, there's going to be a lot of good characters, I think, that play out of this, and it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out, and I'm excited. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Right, there's my thoughts on the uh, on Major League Fishing. Uh, I've kind of went gathered all of it through, you, you know, from what I said. Remember, take it with a grain of salt. Every This is all from one man's perspective of what I think might be actually going on what could possibly be going on uh so take it as you will hope you guys enjoyed this episode it was uh it was an interesting one because you know this is something that i'm passionate about fishing you know related i'm i'm passionate about fishing and the fishing industry and that's kind of one of my career objectives to go into so i just am curious to see how it all unfolds do my research on it see what all happens within the actual industry and kind of see, I don't know how to explain it, but just kind of see how the future might be impacted by this. And I think this is a good example of how the different uh, industries are changing as far as the fishing and hunting industry and how generations like uh, with myself and newer generations, new people that are getting involved in hunting and fishing are actually changing the industry for whether it be the good or the for the bad so i hope you did enjoy this one remember you can listen along to the podcast at soundcloud.com slash podcast podcast as well as watch the podcast at youtube.com slash be benefits and follow along with myself on instagram at be benefits yeah i was trying to think did i say it by myself it doesn't matter thanks for doing, tuning in you guys knew what i meant uh thanks for sticking it to my stuffed nasally voice for this uh this week's episode it was uh it was a good one so hope you guys uh enjoyed and continue having an awesome day